Hi, I'm Maria and this is NASA Now. Recently, a team of international astronomers made a stunning announcement after extensive research found that our Milky Way galaxy contains a minimum of 100 billion planets. That's right, a hundred with nine zeros after it. Today, we have one of the co-authors of a story in the January 12th issue of Nature that announced this amazing discovery. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. In an earlier program, we talked about coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. We also discussed how the sun was entering into the solar maximum period. Well, in January, the Earth was impacted by one of the largest waves of plasma and electromagnetic radiation since 2005. The category M8.7 class solar flare struck the Earth January 24th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The result was one of the most spectacular auroras sky watchers have seen in a very long time. You can keep track of the solar flare activity by looking for the space weather link right here at the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Every day, NASA scientists are discovering something new about our planet, the solar system, the Milky Way galaxy, and the universe. Today we are going to learn more about the incredible study which revealed there are no fewer than 100 billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy. To help us grasp what this means, we are joined by research scientist Stephen Kane from the NASA Exoplanet Science Institute. Hello Stephen, why is this announcement about the number of planets in our galaxy so important? The new discovery shows that planets are very common in our galaxy and in the universe. This is a very significant result. One of the main questions we are trying to answer at the moment is how common are planets in the universe? And in particular, how common are planets like the Earth? The new result shows that not only are planets common, but that small planets are more common than large planets. And this is very good news because we know that life can occur on small planets where we have an atmosphere and where we have liquid water. So this is very good news for finding habitable planets like the Earth. What type of research led you to the conclusion that there are as many as 100 billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy? The survey was uh, all conducted from the ground using fairly small ground-based telescopes, only one meter in diameter, which is uh, fairly small these days for those kinds of telescopes. But we used a lot of them. And the reason that we used a lot of them is we had them spread all over the world so that we could look at these stars 24 hours a day so that when the star was setting somewhere, it was rising somewhere else and we could keep looking. And over the course of this 10 to 15 years, we've been able to tell how many of these stars that we're looking at have planets and how many don't. So for this study, you use a large number of small ground-based telescopes. Are there other methods being used to search for planets? Another method that we can use to find extrasolar planets is called the transit method. If you imagine that you are looking at the disk of another star and the planet passes across the disk, then it blocks out some of the light. We can measure how much light is missing by carefully monitoring the light from the star. And from that, we can tell not only that there is a planet there, but how big the planet is. And it is now being used from space by NASA's Kepler mission. Based on your findings, this must mean there are a lot of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. How many stars are there? Our galaxy contains over 100 million stars, just like our sun. And many of them likely have planets. But our galaxy is also only one of many millions and we can see that there are many more galaxies out there and that's when we start to talk about the universe. The universe is everything that we can see around us. You heard that scientists use different methods to detect planets orbiting around a star. 
Here's a chance for you to try one of these techniques using real data from the Kepler Space Telescope. In this activity, students will investigate light curve data gathered by Kepler from 10 planets. You will use the data to determine the period, orbital distance, and size of the planet. You can find the link to this lesson on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.